while waiting for a ride from his parents. Just hours after killing him, the Auburn Police Department started pushing their narrative, demonizing Enosa despite the fact that he was unarmed, broke no laws, and had no criminal record. The investigations that followed were not about finding the truth, but to find justification for their officers' abuse of power. The city of Auburn has seen much of the evidence and statements made, but instead of holding their officers accountable, they swept it under the rug. Both officers were back to work in less than a month after beating and killing Enosa. After Enosa was taken from us, our first priority was to take care of him, to lay him to rest. He would never find the love of his life. Have his own family or watch his niece and nephew grow up. It was only after he was taken care of that we were ready to start planning our fight for truth and justice. Let's go back to the investigation. We were told that all officer involved shootings are investigated by, by the VIT, the Valley Investigations Team, which comprised of seven law enforcement, law enforcement agencies, Auburn, Des Moines, Federal Way, Kent, Renton, Tequila, and the Port of Seattle. Supposedly, this team was considered a third party investigative team that would ensure the investigation to be unbiased if one city committed an officer involved shooting, the other six cities would investigate the incident. We still don't understand how this is considered third party and unbiased when Auburn is a partner in it. Amen. Anyways, we let their investigation proceed and conclude. Once done, our family decided to do our own. Our, my family, including me, my husband, and our children, EJ's two older sisters and younger brother. We requested the full VIT report, Auburn's police reports, the medical examiner report, all audio and, tra all audio and tra trans transcribed statements collected by witnesses and the officers involved. All the evidence, crime scene and autopsy image images, anything related to the case that we could access, including the dash cam footage were taken to our home and combed through carefully at our dining room table. This was especially hard for my family to review, but we had no other choice. We said lots of prayers for strength, guidance, and comfort. No family should have to do their own investigation because they can't and don't trust the su supposed expert investigators to do their job. Yeah. We went through the medical examiner's report. My daughter marked herself with a Sharpie to show all Enosa's inflicted wounds. As we reviewed the gruesome crime scene pictures, we had to keep reminding ourselves that his body was just a shell now and that his spirit was still living. My daughters had to watch their brother die hundreds of times over as they reviewed and critiqued the dash cam video. No family should have to do this. We found many inconsistencies. We found lots of leading the officers when they struggled with answers to questions. Mm. We even found incomplete reports. There was more to, to include on the report once Anosa was killed, which was left out of their reports. We came to the conclusion that police should not and cannot investigate themselves. Yeah! all cover for each other. Like I mentioned before, it was never about finding out the truth, but to justify the officer's actions. Then after all that, we found out that Pierce County would have to conduct their own investigation since EJ passed on the border of Auburn, considered to be Pierce County. It's been over a year now. We've been patient and prayerful as we await Pierce County's decision. 
I'd like to believe there are still good people in the world and someone will do the right thing. By police brutality and excessive force tactics. Change and reform need to happen now. I have never seen a profession where murder is allowed to go unpunished. No one should be above the law, especially police officers. I'd like to thank Black Lives Matter for allowing me the opportunity to speak again today. Please go with peace and love, and I say all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. the chief, so disrespectful to families, okay? I, 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 I can't sugarcoat nothing. I've been in this fight for three plus years, and I, I can't sugarcoat nothing. If you came to listen, listening is all you should have done. Amen. Especially when there are families on hand yeah. who have lost their loved ones, and so could your police department. Yeah. That is disrespectful. Very disrespectful. Yeah. Let me just call that out right That's there. Right. I am Katrina Johnson. I am the cousin of Charlena Lyles. We have been in this struggle for justice for my cousin. Next week on Thursday, it will be three years. No justice, no answers. And, if, and I know these families all too well because they are going down the road that we are already on and all we can do is support each other. We are not fighting for our loved ones. We are fighting for you. Yeah. Our loved ones are already dead. They're not coming back. Yeah. We are glad you guys have finally decided to join Parity with Black Lives. I need you guys to apologize to Sonia Joseph for killing Giovanni Joseph McDade. Yeah. For killing Eugene Nelson. Yeah. And many other lives that you guys have taken. There is no solidarity when you have that blue line because it supersedes your blackness and any other thing. Yeah. Because it's really not about being black or white. It's a war against good and evil yeah. and the blue line is thicker than yeah. all of that. Because you can die if you are white, if you are black, and if you are indigenous. They are sparing nobody. Not pregnant women. So I'm not coming to no rally to have you blow no smoke up my ass. Excuse my language. Because it shouldn't have took the murder of George Floyd to bring y'all to the table and finally decide that racism is enough, that black lives matter. We should have been battling to you when you keep killing us. I'm Charlene Gonzalez's cousin. And I just normally start our rallies with, out with, say her name! Charlie! Say her name! Charlie! What's her name? Charlie! What's her name? Charlie! Say her name! Charlie! Say her name! Charlie! Say what's her name? Charlie! Say her name! Charlie! 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 Even though we are still grieving, we are hurt and of the lack of compassion for life demonstrated by Auburn Police Department on last May 31st, 2019. We have all gathered here today to show our unity and support to the cause of exposing and eradicating the wrongful practices and civil crimes administrated by law enforcement who are mostly targeting people of color throughout this country. Jesse was a son, cousin, nephew, grandchild, a child god. Sadly, Auburn Police Department didn't honor this when they encountered Jesse on that fatal day in May 2019. Jesse will never get married, have a child, or even get to celebrate his 28th birthday on July 10th. Jesse, 
It saddens me that you did not join us when we traveled to your ancestral home of Cambodia while you were alive. And it saddens me, due to COVID-19, there was a delay for you to travel with your deceased uncle to put to final rest by Buddhist tradition. With the recent killing of George Floyd by the hands of Minneapolis police, we are once again reminded a trouble over excessive force and systematic racism is not reformed in any type of fashion by the current mentality of many law enforcement officers. We must continue, not just only for Jesse, but for every person whose neck is literally under the racist knee of a system that has predicated on violence against black, brown, and native bodies since American government was established. Yeah. We need to demand police reform. We need a whole Auburn Police Department accountable for allowing this predator killer to stay on the force, which resulted in three killings by one officer. The police unions need to stop protecting murderers and paying them during investigations. Yes. Until police departments are decentralized, local police departments bottom up, county by county, local people for local needs, and open review of conduct procedures by unlawful killings by police against persons of color. Police take the lives in every state, city, county, and community. Until last May, I never expected, nor would I have imagined, I would share with you this horrific experience of my foster son, her story of being a victim of systematically racist police brutality through all the hurt and unanswered questions, let us all remember to keep the memories alive for all people who have suffered the same fate as Jesse and George Floyd. Only as a united community of voice can we stop unjust travesties from happening to yet another family. Yeah. I believe Officer Nelson targeted Jesse, <laughs> believing that no one would care about yet another indigent, homeless person of color. He was proven wrong. Jesse had a keen sense of humor. I remember his love of wrestling and us going to the WWE with his brother, and they broke furniture in the bedroom in the back half of my house. Oh, man. I could get mad. I took them to the wrestling. Jesse had a fixation with Naruto and funny poses. From his cousin Mary, Jesse was into breakdancing. He told me he had a chance to dance with the mass of monkeys. He was so excited. He was working on to be able to do more moves. He was very passionate about it. Today I stand with Carrie, his mother, who survived Khmer Rouge and had proved to be a difficult journey from Cambodia to America. Her life and the lives of her children have proved that this is a system that has failed not only Jesse, but fell and suffered many other people. Jesse suffered from being left by the wayside, a byproduct of institutional racism that tunneled him through the foster care system, homelessness, and the mental health institution. Only standing together can we fix a broken system as this one. I ask that everyone to hold up four fingers and let's stand for a moment of silence for all the victims whose lives ended too far, too soon by way of law enforcement. Yeah. Standing with me today are the mothers of Giovanni and EJ, and the cousin of Charlene. Oh, standing with me today are the mothers of Giovanni and EJ, and the cousins of Charlena, bonded together in our share of pain. Mm. This is not a family you want to join. Amen. Please say their names. Jesse. Jesse. Giovanni. Giovanni. EJ. EJ. Charlena. Charlena. Justice for Floyd. Justice for Floyd. Justice for Jesse. Justice for Jesse. Justice for Isaiah. Justice for Isaiah. Justice for Ahmed. Justice for Ahmed. Justice for Brianna. Justice for Brianna. Justice for Chance. Justice for Chance. Justice for EJ. Justice for EJ. Justice for Giovanni. Justice for Giovanni. Justice for Shay Taylor. Justice for Shay Taylor. Justice for Charlena Lyles. Justice for Charlene Lyles. Not this time. Not this time. Stop the killing. Stop.
name is Sonia Joseph. I'm the mother of Giovanni Joseph McDade, who was killed here in the city of Kent, June 24th, 2017. And it was very disrespectful to have the chief of police here speak in solidarity when our demands for every single police car in Kent to have dash cams, for every officer in the city of Kent to have body cams have yet not been filled. So your solidarity means nothing, nothing. I want to call out Dan Satterberg. <clears throat> in Washington, there hasn't been one officer that has been prosecuted for murder. So if you're here in solidarity, what are you doing as a leader for the progression of accountability for King County? The day that my son was murdered, I started. I never stopped and I will not stop until we get accountability for the murder of our young people, black, white, Asian, all of us who have been killed by law enforcement. I pushed very hard for the inquest process for families to have attorneys. Working with 940 to push for police reform. And it's up to you, the community, to do your part and hold people accountable, to hold people in power, to hold people who can make a change in policies, to hold people that are leaders. Take your time. Amen. To go against the grain and start working for our communities. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to take a moment of silence for all the families who have lost children, cousins. Say his name, Giovanni. Say his name, Giovanni. Say his name, Giovanni. Say what's his name, Giovanni. So what's his name, Giovanni. Say his name, Giovanni. Say his name, Giovanni. My name is Delaina Wallace, and I'm about to do a speech real quick. But before I do that, I do want to address again that was very disrespectful. Yes. I don't. Um, I started the protest in Auburn. I led it. I had a, a meeting with the mayor in Auburn on Monday. Oh, I'm about to cry. Hold on. <laughs> on Tuesday, after she was in my face talking about, oh, we promise you this, this, and that, that's when I found out about the lawsuit. She didn't bring up the lawsuit to me one time. I felt so disrespected. That's tokenism. She was going to use my black face to make herself look good. And you black officers out here talking with a sign for a picture? For a picture? Do you really think that they care, bro? They don't care. They don't get y'all next. Okay, let me let me continue. Thank you, guys. This speech is dedicated to my sister. Rest in peace. I have presented many speeches in the past week, and I try to talk about different things. I've talked about those who have been victimized by police brutality and murdered by the police officers here in our nation. I have also talked about my personal experiences with racism. But today I'm gonna to be telling you all about the injustice and story of my sister. Yesterday is amazing Christina Wallace and the impact of white privilege because just like everyone else, she will not be silenced. In February 2017, around three in the afternoon, my sister was out with her aunt and her cousins, one named Amaya, along with Amaya's two younger brothers who will not be named out of respect. They were going north on I-5 
as traffic started to slow down, everyone was almost at a stop. That's when a man that was going 60 miles per hour crashed into the car with the kids and smashed their bodies into each other. Amaya died on the scene. Her two little brothers had serious injuries and will, certain, and will soon have to learn how to walk again. My sister suffered from internal bleeding. My sister, my sister died later that night in Harborview Hospital, February. You got it, you got it. You got this? You got it. February 3rd, 2017 at 9.20 p.m. at two years old. The man who killed my sister was white. His name is Todd Eugene Brown. 52 years old at the time of my sister's killing. Driving 60 miles per hour and stopped track faked while high on methamphetamine. During the case, the Homish County didn't take away his license, his car, didn't give him any legal or criminal charges. He spent only one night in jail. Getting, getting close to his trial, he faked his own suicide to avoid the case. Not only letting me, not, not letting me and my family grieve in peace. In 2018, the Homish County Court gave this man the verdict of not guilty. Fuck the system. Fuck the police. Claiming there's no legal limit on how much meth one could consume. But that's because meth is illegal. This man, this white man, got to walk free after taking two black girls' lives as if it never happened. But karma has his way. He ended up drowning two weeks later. Now, some of you may be wondering, what is the point of this? Well, there's multiple points. One, white privilege is real, and you cannot deny that. Yeah. Two, the justice system is a joke. And lastly, yeah. and lastly, there has been a lot of talk about how George Floyd was on meth when he was killed by that officer. Why is it the same drug that was used to injustice my sister's killing by a white man is also the same drugs that's used to criminalize a black man who was wrongfully killed. Who was wrongfully killed. Who was wrongfully killed and suffocated in the hands of the officers who's supposed to keep us safe. White privilege is real. Make that make sense to me. Stop making excuses for your actions. Stop avoiding the fact that the system is set up for people of color to fail. Stop ignoring black lives. And from the great words of Malcolm X, I'm here to tell you that I charge the white man. I charge the white man with being the greatest murderer on earth. I charge the white man, I charge the white man with being the greatest kidnapper on earth. There is no place in the world that the man can go and say that he created peace and harmony. Everywhere he's gone, he's created havoc. Everywhere he's gone, he's created destruction. So I charge him. I charge him to be the greatest kidnapper on earth. I charge him to being the greatest murderer on earth. I charge him with being the greatest robber and enslaver on this earth. White privilege is when a white girl can accuse me of doing something I didn't do without everyone believing her without having no proof. White privilege is my sister's murderer walking free and seeing him at the gas station, I can't even say nothing. White privilege is real, period. Period. And this is off my speech, but I just want to say one last thing. Black is black is black is black is black is black. Yeah. They don't care that my mom is white. When I was five years old, the police snatched me up. When I was eight years old, I walked into my mom's friend's house and they called me the N-word. They do not care. That tokenism right there is embarrassing. Tell it. Shameful. Do not fall for that stuff. 
when they, they when they change their streets to Black Lives Matter, and when these little companies who've been uh, asking for black labor put on their website, Black Lives Matter, do not fall for that bullshit. Thank you. Institute for Community Leadership, my name is Nyla Rosen. Dr. King teaches a threat to justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. everywhere. By extension, that means a step towards justice anywhere presents the possibility of justice everywhere. We have a lot of work to do. It is good to be here in the city of Kent today. Thank you to the organizers of the rally. Thank you to Kalisha Lovelace, Lover, Men, Lover Empowerment Mentoring, for organizing and bringing us here. Thank you to the city of Kent, the Kent School District, and the Kent Police for supporting. The Institute for Community Leadership supports House Resolution 100, calling for the creation of the first ever United States Commission on Truth, Racial Healing, and Transformation. This revolutionary measure put forth by former Black co uh, Congressional Caucus President Barbara Lee calls for the end of 400 years of injustice due to slavery, institutional racism, and its effects on policies and practices in the United States. Congressman Adam Smith supports it. If he is your congressman, please call him and tell him thank you. If you belong to another congressional district, Dr. Kim Schreier, or any other district in Washington, please call your congressional member and ask them to sign on. We can do better together. We can win. Victory is in sight. Unity is our only strength. Thank you. Keep hope alive. Hello, everyone. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me here. My name is Fatima, and I'm a student of the Institute for Community Leadership, and I'm a junior at Kenwood High School. Racism is a coercive evil which destroys the soul and by extension destroys human beings. It plagues our society and our institution. Racism is written in the history of this nation, no doubt. Violence and hate plague our police system and my brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters have to pay the cruel cost Racism is, racism is a tenacious evil, but it's not immutable. The shape of the world today calls upon us to encourage, to guide, and to promote our police officers to be peace officers. No more violence in our streets. We need peace. guardians and social workers no more violence on our streets all over the nation men women children elders young people like me are marching mobilizing and organizing for legislative change to hold our institutions more accountable I want to see people like me further on in the line in places of political power to make legislative change, I want to see people. I want to see people like me, black, brown, standing together, not saying with me. Power to the people. Not saying with me. Power to the people. Not saying with me. Power to the people. Thank you.